Hello everyone. So today we'll be talking about Hadamar matrices. This is probably something that you haven't heard about, even if you've taken linear algebra, so I hope you find it interesting. Anyways, let's start with the basics first, just to make sure everyone understands the content in this presentation. So, first off, what are matrices? You've probably heard of the movie The Matrix, but that's not what we're talking about here. In mathematics, matrices are just an arrangement of values in rows and columns. For example, in the top left of the image, bottom image, we have a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are a few more examples in that image, and as you can see, the values in matrices do not have to be real numbers. In fact, they can be anything, such as expressions or symbols. Hopefully, this concept of matrices isn't too confusing. There are a lot of interesting and useful things you can do with matrices in general, but this presentation won't be talking about them. Perhaps one of you watching this can look into that and create a presentation about it. The next thing we should talk about regarding matrices before going on to our main topic today is the notation for matrices and how to read them. So, in order to denote a matrix, we can use brackets to second off an arrangement of values. You could also use parentheses, as my instructor at GSC did this past summer, but I would recommend sticking with brackets since that is a universally accepted way to denote matrices. The next thing that is important for you to know about matrices is how to know a matrix's size. When reading the size, we say rows by columns. Rows are the horizontal values and columns are the vertical values. So, for example, this first matrix is a 2x2 two two matrix because it has two rows and two columns. This next one here is a 3x2 matrix because it has three rows and two columns. Okay, this is pretty simple stuff, but make sure you understand it and remember it, since we'll use it a bit later on. Alright, now we can talk about Hadamard matrices. So. Hadamard matrices are any n by n matrix that contain the values plus or minus 1 such that each row of the matrix agrees with all other rows on exactly n over 2, or half, of their positions. Reading this definition for the first time, you might be a little confused as to what it means, but we'll look at some examples to clear it up. First, we have a 2 by 2 Hadamard matrix 1, negative 1, 1, 1. As you can see, the matrix only contains values of either 1 or negative 1, and the rows only agree with each other on one value. That is, the first value of both rows are 1, so they agree with each other. However, the second value in the first row is negative 1, while the second value in the second row is 1, so they disagree with each other. Thus, only one half of the values in each row agree with the values in all other rows. Here are some more 2x2 two two Hadamard matrices. Take a look at them and see if the definition makes more sense to you. Now, it seems pretty obvious as to what a 2x2 two two Hadamard matrix could look like, but what about one that is 4x4 four four in size, let's say? It may be a bit more difficult to pick out what exactly is happening here in this the furthest the picture in the furthest right but it's the same premise as before if you analyze the first two rows you will see that they agree on only two values or half of them comparing the first and third row you'll see the same pattern the same thing happens when you compare the first and fourth rows now be careful here we can only compare the first row with all other rows we also have to compare the second row with the third row, the second with the fourth, and the third with the fourth. Only if all of these comparisons say that half of the values agree with each other can we then say that this is indeed a Hadamard matrix. Just as we need to know what Hadamard matrices are, it is also important for us to know some tricks for making them, let's say. The first thing to know is that Hadamard matrices can only have a size of 2 or any multiple of 4. 
Well, it is somewhat obvious that we cannot have a Hadamard matrix, matrix with an odd number of rows and columns. The fact that we cannot have something like a, say, 6 by 6 Hadamard matrix may be more surprising. I encourage you to try and make a 6 by 6 Hadamard matrix, but I'll go ahead and tell you that it won't be possible. I won't be explaining why this is the case in this presentation, but you can look it up. Um, there are various proofs and whatnot in line that I think makes sense. The next thing that can help you make Hadamard matrices is Sylvester's construction. You can read exactly what this means on the screen, but the basic premise is that we can create Hadamard matrices by using other Hadamard matrices. The inverse, as you can see in the, on the screen, that just means that the values are all flipped. So 1 becomes negative 1 and negative 1 becomes 1. For example, we can make a 4x4 Hadamard matrix by using four 2x2 two two Hadamard matrices, or an 8x8 Hadamard matrix by using four 4x4 four four Hadamard matrices. I'll show an example of this in a second so that you can understand it better. But the last thing I want to know about Hadamard matrices is that they don't have to comprise of ones and negative ones. And they can be any binary system, such as using black and white squares, so long as they still follow the rules for making Hadamard matrices. I'll have some pictures of these Hadamard matrices for you to see later on, so that you know, that makes more sense as well. All right, so this is how we create a Hadamard matrix using Sylvester's construction. First, we'll start out with a smaller Hadamard matrix, just a 2x2, two two, to make things easier. Then, to construct a new Hadamard matrix, say one of size 4x4, four four, we just have to place four of the 2x2 two two Hadamard matrices next to each other to form a square, except the bottom right one is inverse of the original Hadamard matrix. And voila! We have a new Hadamard matrix that we can made from another smaller one. You can always check this. Um, going through each row again to see that this is true, but this works for any Hadamard matrix so long as it is of size 2 to the k. I said before that I would have some pictures of Hadamard matrices that use color squares instead of ones and negative ones, so here they are. At first glance, they seem pretty weird and your minds might get a little blurry if you stare at one of them for too long. However, we can analyze them to make more sense of what's going on with them. For example, if we look at the Hadamard matrix in the top left, we can see that it follows a normalized pattern, so-called normalized pattern, where the first row and column are all the same thing. So in this case, they're all black squares instead of, you know, a mix of black and white squares. Now, Take a look at the bottommost Hadamard matrix in the, for the right picture. If we look closely, we can see that it was made using Sylvester's construction. Um, depending on how you look at it, it could be four big squares, you know, the top, um, the bottom, and where the bottom one is inverse, or it could be, what is that? It could be 16 smaller Hadamard matrices, depending on how you look at it. Note. The other matrices shown in the right picture are not actually Hadamard matrices because they don't have the same number of rows and columns. Of course, in the bottom left, we have another one that um, seems quite random, doesn't really have a pattern to it, as, say, the one using Sylvester's construction does, but it is indeed also a Hadamard matrix. All of them are. Now, I have a small challenge for anyone watching this presentation. We've already made 2x2 two two and 4x4 four four Hadamard matrices in this presentation, but what about something bigger? What about a 12x12 12 12 Hadamard matrix? Go ahead and see if you can make one. I will say this can take quite a bit of time, but try your best and please don't look the answer up unless you just really give up. Also, I won't be sharing an answer for this question to this question because there are multiple answers and you can self-check your matrix to make sure that it is indeed a Hadamard matrix. Bonus points if you make one using color squares instead. So, we've talked about what a Hadamard matrix is, but why does it exist? Like, what purpose does it serve for humanity other than just being this mathematical thing, right? 
Well, there are actually quite a few applications of Hadamard matrices in the world, but I'll just go through a few. The first is error correction coding. Error correction coding is a process whereby messages are encrypted with redundant information so that error can be more easily identified and fixed. Hadamard matrices are used in order to encrypt these messages. To make better sense of this, let's use an example. Say you wanted to send a picture of this goat from the Earth to a friend on Mars. The picture is broken down into bits of zeros and ones and sent across the vastness of space. However, along the way, various things can interfere with it that causes some errors in the bits. This means that by the time your friend gets the picture, it's a bit blurry with you know, possibly a few pixels missing. Can't really tell what exactly it is. It is obvious that there exist errors, but it's difficult to fix these errors if you don't know what the original picture was supposed to be. However, by using Hardamar matrices in this error correction coding process, those errors can not only be identified, but they can also be fixed so that the original message makes sense. There's a lot that goes into this process that I can't fully explain, so I would encourage you to look it, in, look it up yourself if you would like to. The next application of Hadamard matrices in the real world are in Walsh functions. Now, I honestly even know less about these than for the error correction coding, but I'll do my best to explain what I do. Walsh functions are periodic functions that use ones and negative ones. This sounds oddly similar to Hadamard matrices, and indeed, Hadamard matrices are used to create these functions. The thing that Walsh functions are useful for are Fourier analysis, which is used in signal processing. In today's world, this is obviously extremely important, since all of the electronic devices we use connect to each other using signals. So it is vital that signals can be processed and interpreted correctly, which ensures the information is correctly sent between devices. The last application of Hadamard matrices that I want to touch on are quantum gates. But first, what are quantum gates? As you may know, classical computers use a series of logic gates, such as AND, OR, or NOT, to carry out various functions. They work by taking in some sort of input in the form of bits, manipulating that input to form an output. Quantum gates do the same thing, except they are used in quantum computers instead of classical computers. This means that instead of taking in and outputting bits, they use quantum bits, or qubits for short. Hadamard gates are one such type of quantum gate. So far as I can understand, Hadamard gates work, by, work mathematically by applying a Hadamard matrix to a vector, which represents a qubit. I know that this is a little confusing abstract, and things might get even more confusing, but try to stick with me here. This is an extremely important function because the output of a Hadamard gate is a qubit which is in superposition. This means that the qubit is in such a state, such that instead of just representing a 0 or a 1, as a normal bit would, it represents a probability of either 0 or 1, and we won't know which value it actually represents until we measure it. The superposition, while very confusing as well, is what allows for quantum computers to have the ability to carry out certain tasks in a timely manner that would otherwise take a classical computer tens of thousands of years, if not more. This is a very new field in computer science, and as a result, nobody really knows too much about it, but I hope that kind of that makes all of this kind of makes sense. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this presentation. These are my citations, and I want to thank Drs. Ramos Nicaro, who taught mathematics course at GSSE this past summer, and explained Hadamard matrices to my class as well as my fellow classmates, as well as my fellow classmates who worked on a final project with me in that class, from which I used information in this presentation. I hope everyone listening learned a little bit new something new today, and I hope you all have a good day. Thank you.